Hello everyone and welcome to this my video on Dijkstra's algorithm, updated in brackets if you will. Now the reason it's updated is because wow there are some pretty funky algorithms out there that make this really really hard but I thought it'd be a good idea to show you the one that makes it really really easy, hence being the maths guru. Yes, bigging myself up. Now my name is Darren, thank you very much for watching this video, I'm going to get into it in just a moment but as I normally do, what are we hoping to achieve by the end of this video? Well to understand what it means by shortest path problems, these are pretty big uh, in VCAR and certainly I can guarantee you there's going to be one in your sack. Why? There doesn't seem to be a huge amount of content in the next works network. So all the stuff that's going to be here and in the next chapter if you're following along with Cambridge uh, probably will be sack fodder as I call it. And obviously the most important here is how to apply Dijkstra's algorithm. Now if you want to actually download all the notes that I'm writing on behind me, everything that I'm doing can be downloaded from mathsguru.com. The excitement is is exciting isn't it yes basically free to sign up all of the videos are sequenced all of the notes are downloadable there's time codes there are vcar exam questions as well so if you can do that that'd be greatly appreciated now in a previous video and if you've watched the previous video, I've actually left the Dijkstra stuff in at this moment in time. And if it's not there, I've deleted it. Why? Because sheesh, it shows you how complicated it used to be. But it's really much simpler than it needs to be shown in that way. He says, rambling on. Now, basically, we're going to try and find the shortest path between A and B. Yeah, my GPS seems to do it. I get in my car and it seems to be able to show me the shortest path. But how does it do it? Hmm? I, I thought it was a little man sitting there with a piece of pen and paper and just a very, very large map. No, I didn't. That would be silly. Um, so basically, here is a old example. Here's the shortest path in networks. We only have a few vertices. It's often easy to find the shortest path between them by inspection, right? So if we wanted to find the shortest path between Bartow and Kenson in this one here, well, the chances are we could basically just do lots of... Uh, diagrams through and, and sort of list all the routes through. That's certainly one way to do it. As I say here, we could list all the routes, add all the distances, find the shortest one, but that is very, very time consuming. Yes, I tell you what isn't time consuming, you clicking on the subscribe button for my YouTube channel. Yes, please, if you can, head over to YouTube, that's uh, Maths Guru uh, over there, and just subscribe. All right, if you want to turn off notifications, I promise you I do not spam people with loads and loads of random posts, but when you click that button, it means the world to me, like massive amount. If I get four subscribers at the end of the day, I tend to go a little bit sort of mad. My dog thinks I'm nuts, um, but <clears throat> very few people want to watch math videos. And by doing that click button, by clicking that subscribe button, it just lets me know that you've watched. Now, here we go, Dijkstra, who is he? Edska Wibi Dijkstra, my apologies if I said his name wrong. But basically, this guy came up with an algorithm, and the way that previous textbooks looked at it, it seemed to overcomplicate it, and then we get to the nice and easy one. And the best way for me to do this is to show you how it works, okay? Radio. Now, basically, it revolves around boxes and squares. Mm-hmm. Or numbers and boxes, I think. Anyway. Right, so we are going to start from St. Andrews, and we are going to go to Talangi. So what I actually do is I'm going to highlight St. Andrews, <coughs> and I'm going to highlight Talangi. Now, wherever I start, I'm going to put a zero in a box because that's where I'm starting from and that will sort of make sense in just a moment. So there is a zero in a box. Now what I'm going to try and do is work out all the different roads I can go on when I leave St. Andrews. And I can leave here where I can get to King Lake or I could leave here and I can get to Yarra Glen. Now they're the only two places I can get to. So I can get to King Lake in 13 kilometers. Now you're going to say, how did you know that? Well, that's what that weight there says, 13 kilometers. I can get to Yarra Glen in 15. Oh, okay then. So I'm going to put a 15 there. Now, I have exhausted all the roads I can leave on St. Andrews and I want to find the shortest one to travel along because I'm trying to find the shortest path. Well, okay, it would appear I can go to King Lake in 13. So I'm going to put a box around the King Lake and that's where I'm now going to start. Right? Every time I put a box around a number, that's my new start point. And I'm going to look again and say, well, okay, where are all the roads leaving King Lake? Well, I've got 15 leaving here, and I've got 26 leaving here. Oh, okay. So if I'm already at King Lake, I've traveled 13 kilometers. To then get me to Talangi, I'm going to add another 15 kilometers, which gives me 28. So I'm going to put a 28 in a box there. Why? All I'm really saying is I can get to St. Andrews to Talangi in 28 kilometers by going St. Andrews to King Lake, King Lake to Talangi. Or I can now get to Yarra Glen through 13 to King Lake and the 26 now to Yarra Glen. So 13 and 26 gives me 39. 
Now, I could write the 39, but really, there's no point, because I'm looking for the shortest way to go through my network. And the shortest way in this situation tells me I can actually get to Yarra Glen in only 15 kilometers. So I'm actually not going to write the 39. Have I now exhausted all of the ways leaving King Lake? I have, and I've got now a 28, and I've got a 15. And I'm going to put a box around the shortest or the smallest number, because that's now I can get to Yarra Glen in only 15. Why would I go to Talangi? when I can get to Yarra Glen in only 15. And you're going to see how this all works out in just a moment. Right, I'm at Yarra Glen. I've just put a box around. So now, how many ways are there of leaving Yarra Glen? Well, I could go back here, but that seems a bit silly because I'm going back on myself. So I can go from Yarra Glen to Talangi in 23, or I can go from Yarra Glen to Hillsville in 14. Okay, well, I'm at Yarra Glen now. I've already counted, uh, I've got 15 kilometers. So I'm now going to add on the 23, which gives me 38, he says writing in highlighter. So 38, 15 and 23 is 38. Well, am I going to write down the 38? No, because actually I've already found out I can get to Talangi in only 28 kilometers. All right, I can get to Talangi in 28. So I can either go that way to Talangi or I can go, what did I say, there and there. Well, it doesn't seem to make any sense to go to Talangi in 38, so I'm going to delete that one and keep the 28. What about my other path that I could have gone along? That was here. So started at 15, add the 14 to get me to Hillsville, gives me 29. Mm -hmm. Which one am I going to choose? Well, at the moment, I've got to choose the smallest number. And the smallest number there is 28. And so actually, it doesn't really matter now what I do with the Hillsville value, because if I go from Hillsville to Talangi, I'd add on another 18. That's going to be way, way bigger than 28. And I'm done. Believe it or not, that is Dijkstra's algorithm. You're just working your way around in a logical way. And I've got another example coming up as well. Now, what do we say then? So now a lot of people go, well, how do I know the shortest route through there? What you now do is you backtrack it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start at my Talangi and I'm going to say, right, well, how many roads lead backwards out of Talangi? Well, there's this one here at 15 and there's this one here at 23. So I'm now going to do the 28 and I'm going to take away the 15. And if 28 minus 15 gives me that value there, then that's the route I'm going to take. So does 28 minus 15 give me 13? It does. So I'm now going to highlight that section there. And let's just check the other one. 28 minus 23 does not give me 15. So that couldn't be the route that I've taken. Okay, right, and I do it again. I'm now at King Lake. Well, as it turns out, there only seems to be one way to get back there because the 13 there minus the 13 there will give me the zero. And there we go. And you might turn around and say, well, that's a really stupidly simplistic example. Of course it is. Yes, that's why I chose it first. Well, probably that's why Cambridge chose it first. So my shortest distance is S to K to T, and probably we would have to write it 28 kilometers. Now, a lot of people go, but I, I could have done that by inspection. Of course you could have done with that example. I mean, yes, but the algorithm is gonna be used for more complicated examples. Have you subscribed to my YouTube channel yet? Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Life would be amazing if you could. It's that little click for you means the world from me. Now, another example of Dijkstra's algorithm,